Good day, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA soccer show. We will be showing a clip to tell you where Paul Lafferty is hiding. But joining me is our regular super sub and Manning Rangers league winner, Gavin Radford. Gav? Morning, mate. Good to be here again. Some good Carabao soccer last night, some yeah. good goals. It sure um, was. Looks like it's going to be interesting semi finals. Good games. Well, let's hope so. And uh, it's Christmas time, so as usual, Gav, a lot of yeah. questions asking. Yeah, about I'm just Christmas. worried about my Boxing Day matches, you know, and all you need. Stuck in front of the TV watching all the games, and if they postpone any more games, it yeah. will be quite sad because I think that's when English teams really come out and the fans get to enjoy their soccer. Yeah, well, we'll be joined shortly by Stevie Bram in our Fulham studio, but we kick off as always with our last one standing soccer competition. Unfortunately, we've lost two rounds due to the COVID, but going into round seven, we have 39 entries left. We have two ladies that have survived this far. One, our reigning champion, Catherine Armstrong, alongside Michelle Tovey, the wife of Bufana Fana captain, Neil Tovey. We have four international guys left. Francois Dumy from Mauritius, while three guys are in the UK, namely Steve Potter, Nigel Swinbank, and Colin Young. We have a couple of guys with multiple picks, those being Rion Diago, who's done great, he's still got three, alongside Des Ferry, who has two pick, while one former champion is still hanging tough, and that is Sean Phillips. Our other entrants, who I'll name, is Chris Giorgio, Doug Stain, Hassan Moore, his nephew Mo Moore, Paddy Loker, Gary Grant, Mark Curry, Brett Galley, Eric Narak, Jason Fulks, Mark Marinkovitz, Pierre de Ferk, Robbie Burns, Luke Lally, Paulo de Carmo, Solwyn Elk, Dave Harker, his son Andrew Harker, James Rich from Hollywood, John Biscobi, Bruce Armstrong, Jeff Ward, Paul Willemsa, Ravesh Badassi, Tony Bargate, Manny Almeida, Lawrence Verners, and our own Paul Lafferty. Guys, Sunday, 11 o'clock is closing time, so please get studying. We now cross over to our UK correspondent, Stevie Braham, who hopefully is in uh, London. Good morning, Steve. Morning, Barge. Morning, Gav. Morning, morning. Big games last night? Yeah, yeah, good games. Uh, you know, a bit of excitement, what we want to see, and uh, uh, Leicester are probably still trying to work out how they didn't win that game. They were leading from the ninth to the 95th minute, and ended up losing on penalties. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, they'll probably wake up this morning and wonder how that, that escaped them. But yeah, yeah good games and, and, and a good draw. I mean, obviously, we've got some exciting games to look forward to in the new year. Yeah. Such as Paul will be gloating. Uh, unfortunately, it's the Antonio Conte derby, Chelsea Tottenham. That should be a humdinger. Yeah, you know, obviously, uh, you know, there's no love lost between the teams, and obviously, it's over two legs. So, it really, you know, really will be good games, and hopefully they'll both play their, their strongest available teams. Yeah, Arsenal, Liverpool, the second one. Uh, Steve, January the third and tenth. That's fairly quick. It is. Uh, I think because of the, the sort of relatively sort of tight fixture schedule, um, you know, to fit it in, and, and that's going to be quiet because you think that um, COVID permitting, clubs are, those clubs are going to play three games over the Christmas New Year period, and then they've got to play. Literally, uh, within another two or three days, they've got to play the, the League Cup first round the semi-final. Yeah. So, you know, four games in about ten days. I think that's going to be quite uh, a challenge for, for their squads. Yeah, looking forward to it, I must say. Steve, on to the weekend. Finally, we've got uh, Premiership Games, Boxing Day Sunday. Kick-off Wolves-Watford. How do you see that going? Yeah, I thought Wolves have been... Uh, Interesting. I mean, Wolves have been very good defensive. I mean, you look at their their record against the big teams and uh, held Chelsea. I think that uh, I, I just fancy Wolves there uh, to sneak through. You know, what would need to start picking up some points because they are, you know, a bit too close to comfort to that bottom three. But I, I fancy Wolves. No kidoki. The Lancashire Derby, Burnley against Everton. Yeah, I mean, Everton has still got uh, uh, you know sort of mini injury crisis. Burnley obviously have lost a couple of games because of COVID. Not quite sure what you're going to get. Burnley again, you know, in trouble. They can't afford to lose that. I think that'd be a close game, but I, I fancy I fancy Burnley to hold Everton. Okay, dokie. Will Tottenham continue their impressive recent form? I, 
think so. Look, you know, uh, you know, they're playing. They're playing well at the moment. Conti, a very interesting stat that uh, I saw a couple of days ago. They they looked at the ad um, kilometres run by the team under uh, Nuno, and they were like last in the Premier League. Conte, uh, in a, in a few games he's been in charge, they were in the top two. So he's obviously got them working much harder. Uh, and you can, and you, that's noticeable on the pitch. So, yeah, I think uh, I think they could, they could win that. Okie dokie. Brighton, Brentford. Yeah, I mean, Brentford is uh, that uh, they've really been underperforming in the last uh, in the last couple of months. Um, you know, I think that uh, they they need to they need to pick some points up. You know, but Brentford are not an easy team to beat. But I just I fancy Brighton to get their first win in a few. Okie dokie. And the game I thought could be upset of the weekend. Aston Villa hosting Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, Villa, this is a big, big test for uh, Steve Giles. It'll be interesting. Thomas Dugal rested quite a few big names last night, uh, obviously, in an anticipation of having to play, play, uh, you know, play them at the weekend with one or two still out. I'm not sure if Villa will upset them. I think they'll have a go, but I just fancy Chelsea. Do you? Okay. Steve, on to the championship. Major disappointment Monday night with Fulham getting beat. Do you see yourself rebounding against Birmingham City? Well, I, I think they have. Uh, it was a very poor performance. I mean, we never really got going. But the credit to Sheffield United, I mean, they, they set themselves up very well. They got an early goal and then hard, made themselves hard to break down. Um, you know, Birmingham lost 4 little away last time out at Blackburn. I think we would be, you know, I would be very disappointed if we didn't so win. I don't think it'd be by many, but I think we need to get back. Uh, otherwise, you know, the pack of course is up pretty much, so we need to be careful. Yeah, mentioning Blackburn, how do you see them going at Hull City? Yeah, I mean, Hull play well. I mean, to be fair to them, I mean, they've had a very good run. But Blackburn are, are on fire. I mean, they're the most informed team in the division. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to see that uh, Hull will hold them. So, you know, Blackburn, considering where they were uh, a few weeks ago after that 7 0 drubbing, uh, they could find themselves in the top two in the next uh, week or so. Okie dokie. Huddersfield Blackpool. I think we've got that on TV here. How do you see that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Blackpool have really not uh, had a good run recently. I fancy that they came back, they've got this to win against Peterborough, but I fancy Huddersfield at home. I think they'd probably be uh, you know, a little bit too strong. Yeah, a good game, having watched both games last week. Middlesbrough versus Notts Forest. What's your call there? Yeah, I think it will be a good game. I mean, obviously, Middlesbrough had a very good win and Forest a great run. Um, I, I, fancy, I can't, again, I think Forest are going to continue this run. I'm not sure they'll necessarily win, but I don't, I don't see them getting beaten at Borough. Okay, can my boys upset Sheffield United? Well, um, Sheffield United are on a bit of a roll at the moment. I mean, they're not that far drift in the playoff place, and Paul Gibbottom has got them playing very well with a lot more belief. Uh, they're making themselves very hard to break down. Yeah. I, again, you know better than me. You're not sure what you're going to get with Preston. But I, <laughs> I think if there was to be a winner, I think I'd, I'd have to go with Sheffield United, I'm afraid. Yeah, I must say, Steve, just watching them the other day against you, I was really impressed. And if there's an outside team to maybe sneak into that playoff place, you know, I think they're the team that could be very dangerous. And uh, Steve, last but not least, uh, Monday night, QPR, Bournemouth, two top six sides. How do you see that going? Yeah, well, Bournemouth are having a shocking run. Uh, one and nine, uh, beat the last time out. You know, they've got one or two injuries, but he can't seem to sort of get get much out of them at the moment. QPR at home are quite strong, uh, and I think they'll go for it. You know, they want to sort of keep in touch with the playoff places. I fancy a little bit of an upset. I fancy QPR to win that. Okay, well, I hope you're right, Steve, because that's my value bit of the weekend. Steve, you've been in great form. Uh, the guys are all asking for Christmas bonuses. I need your best bet and your best value bet, please. Well, I'm going to go for Wolves as my best. I fancy them home. I think they, you know, they, they don't give much away, and I think they'll, they'll, they'll score the winner. Um, my value bet also is QPR. Okay. I just looked at, looked at those odds and thought, you know, the way the way that both teams have been playing, uh, I fancy QPR at home. You know, they're, they're, they're a little ground and they're strong at home, so. Um, and that, you know, that will obviously help us if, uh, if QPR do, do us a favour for Bournemouth. Yeah, well, I must say, having watched Bournemouth the last couple of weeks, Steve, they're going to drop out of it, not out of the auto, or out of the automatic. I haven't been impressed. 
really disappointed in them. But um, they did exactly the same. Yeah, they did the same last season. You know, they started off uh, really well and then had a real blip and uh, finished at the end. But they were adrift. Um, yeah. So for whatever whatever reason, I say one win in nine is not uh, top two four. Yeah, well, it's amazing in the championship. You can win a couple in a row and you're back in it again. So yeah. let's hope your Fulham boys can do something. And Steve, thanks again for uh, helping us through the year. And uh, we'll speak next week, but have a good Christmas. Yeah, and you, and you Gav, as well. Cheers, cheers. Thanks, Bye. Steve. All the best. Oh, that's our UK correspondent, Stevie Bram. Man full of knowledge. Always up to date, Gav. Yeah, I know he's up to date. He's uh, got his finger on the pulse there in England. Yeah. Just a uh, pity about the weather there at this yeah. time of the year. Um, but yeah, the, the supporters and the players, they, they don't care about the weather. They're out yeah. in their droves. Uh, we, we see a bit of rain and we, we stay home. Yeah, We've got okay. to get into that culture of getting into the games and supporting. Anyway, uh, <clears> thanks <throat> to Stevie. Guys, we have a clip to be shown from uh, Paul Lafferty. He put his leave <clears> for him <throat> in and uh, this is where he was last night. So if we can put it up there. A little bit of volume there. That spurs off to scoring their first goal. Yeah. They're really playing well. It looks like they had a bit of a break and then they've come back quite strong. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, spurs after the first goal. We've also got a couple of photos with uh, from Paul. Uh, one is a guy that has done a show, Tottenham legend. Charlie Pigram with Paul. You can see how low where they are. It's a great seat. There's a couple of pics of Paul with... And this one is a guy's a massive haul. Big time horse race trader. Jeremy DeCeda. That's the guy in the middle. In between Paul and Charlie. Massive Spurs man. And I'm sure Paul will be trying to get a few tips to pay for his trip. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Paul, Charlie and Jeremy. Great picks. And uh, Spurs are on form. So Beautiful stadium. As you can see... Uh, uh, really magnificent out there. Yeah. And but this looks like Paul looks like he's a Harley Davidson rider with that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our boys are nice and all wrapped up, but I'm sure they'll all be there on Sunday when uh, Spurs host Crystal Palace. Anyway, on to the fixtures for our Boxing Day, Sunday Boxing Day, and we kick off lunchtime, half past two our time, but lunchtime in the UK with Liverpool hosting Leeds. Any chance of an upset, Gav? No, I can't see. Leeds seem to be right off the boil. Um, I don't think they've recovered from the hiding they got from City. I think Liverpool and the uh, club is also complaining about these players being, being out. And, but I think Liverpool, just in such a rich vein of form, yeah. you, it's just going for them. And when you win titles, it goes for you. And I can't see anything other than the Liverpool win. Yeah, definitely. Uh, both teams score. And I looked at over three and a half goals at 12 to 10. I thought that was worth a look at, but uh, can't really see. Now, Stevie B's best bet is Wolves to beat Watford. Now, Watford's his brother's team. So maybe he's got a tip of information whether about the COVID. Do you agree with him? Yeah, I think Wolves are well. They they've come good. They, their home form has improved. The striker's back in form. He's getting a few goals for them. He's still got a target man now to hit again. Yeah. Um. A, a Watford away from home. I think the Tinker man's got a bit to do with that side still. But I think I'm leaning towards Wolves to win this. Yeah. The only problem I've got with Wolves, they played the last six games. They've only won one. They've only scored one goal. But bearing in mind they lost one 0 to Liverpool. Man City beat them. Uh, you know, that's my only concern. If they score, they win, which is obviously a stupid statement. But, you know, I don't see them winning, but I've got no confidence in them, even though Raul Jimenez will come back from suspension. Now, I fancy Burnley to beat Everton. If I jump against you on this one, okay. um, I'm leaning towards Everton. Their form has to turn around, and they showed little glimpses last week. Um, they have to get results, Everton. They're, just, they're going deep into the season now, and... Uh, Benitez is under a bit of pressure. Yeah. Uh, I think the team will bounce back, and I'm leaning towards Everton. Maybe I Sneaker, they're going to have a bit of luck on their side. They're going to have to win this to get through, but uh, well, obviously they're going to have to win. But um, I'm leaning towards Everton. Everton. I'll tell you the reason. I watched Everton against uh, Chelsea. They should have got hammered. The goalkeeper was their best player. The one thing I can't have with him, my mate Eric Redmond is a staunch Evertonian, always reminds me about it. He's poor in the air. And one thing about Burnley, set pieces, that's where they score their goals from. And uh, it's a do or die game from Burnley. They're slowly getting adrift. 15 to 10. I think there'll be goals in this game, but I fancy Everton. I'm sorry, I fancy Burnley. I know Calvert Luna's reportedly back in training, 
But I just think this is a great chance for Burnley. I'm just going to go for Everton thinking that they've got to turn their season around and yeah. this is a game that they can Well, win. this is a winnable a game. game. They should be winning, uh, put it that way. If they want to make top six, they've got to win games like this. But as we all know, Burnley, one of the toughest teams to win on their ground. Yeah, unbeaten in four at home at Turf yeah. So uh, I'm on I think Burnley. it's going to be low, low in goals. Yeah. Man City, Leicester, good things. Yeah, Leicester just, you know, after last night's game, seeing them concede goals. I know they made a few changes, but you can't concede goals. Um, and, and Man City are going to come at you and keep the possession of the ball 60-70% of the game. I can't see any other result uh, Man City to win. Yeah, it should be Man City good things. And I like what he's done with Foden and Grealish, both winning a Christmas party against Newcastle. On the bench, didn't come on, so that'll sort them out. Norwich Arsenal, Arsenal, the form team at the moment, won their last four, looking really good. Will they beat Norwich? Yeah, definitely. This is my bet of the day. I think Arsenal uh, can take all the doubles and trebles with them. They really turn the corner. Um, also, another player, um, Bobby Young, yeah. uh, trying to be bigger than the team, um, and he's been dropped quite uh, quickly from them. Uh, and they've stepped up with two new youngsters in their team who've got a hat trick. Uh, good movement from the young boy. Um, yeah, I think Arsenal will be yeah. too good. Yeah, I think so too. I've got a great bet on that. Works out just under 9-2. to two. I really fancy them. But uh, it be interesting because they've got you know, a lot of games coming up. They've got Liverpool semi-final, home and away. So having a good run and I'm glad for Arteta. I like his style. On to our second page. We've got Tottenham Crystal Palace. Laugh yeah. another victory? Yeah, Laugh's there. So he's, uh, he's got some type of voodoo magic out there. Um, Spurs at home, I mean, that little break that they've had, not playing, uh, I think they've done them a world of good. And yeah. uh, um, Steve is right. I mean, the, if you watch the Spurs team, they are chasing and, and putting teams under pressure. Um, Deli Ali played an exceptional game the other night. Uh, I think Kane looks like he's trying to find his mojo again and, and is wanting to score. I think they'll be too good for an improving Crystal Palace. Yeah. We've got to say Palace of, I think, are punching above their weight this year. I think Vieira's done an exceptionally good yeah. job there. But I think Spurs at home will win this one. Yeah, I've got to agree. They're my best bet of the weekend. 7 of 10. Team in form. Played great against Liverpool. In my opinion, they should have won. Even though Kane should have got sent off. Now, West Ham, I was really disappointed in them last night. I thought they had a go. I know that Mikel Antonio wasn't available. Really disappointed in them. I thought they had a bit of fire the first 20 minutes. Once they went 2-1 down, they didn't seem to come in. Now, Southampton, you just don't know what you're going to get from no, them. They have a full go. Get. I thought 8-10, to 10, I was going to put West Ham in my bets, 1-3 and drawn one of the last four at home. Something to be careful here, Gap. Yeah, you know, it sits in your head a little bit when you, you, you back a team and they get beaten. And they're on such a good run. And when you have a strike, they get beaten. That's what they did to me a couple of weeks ago. But if you look at their home form, they won three and, and drew one of their last four. So the home form is there. You just don't know what teams, when they travel, uh, how they're going to, what type of mindset they're going to be when they get to you. But you would think West Ham at home, in front of their big crowd, you know, Boxing Day match. I'll, I think I'm still going to go with West Ham. I think they'll win this one. Yeah, I just got my down. I'm not saying I wouldn't take eight to ten. I saw seven and a half to ten, over two and a half goals. So that would be my sitting on the fence play. Now, I think Aston Villa can upset Chelsea. I know Chelsea rested a lot of their key players, and Golo Kante being one. They did get up late on to beat Brentford. I like what I've seen from Stevie G's team. Yeah, they've only lost two games. One was at, it was at uh, Liverpool and the other one was to Man City, but they were in both games. Something not right at Chelsea, even though they did win last night. Yeah, this is uh, one of my two draws that's coming up. I think this is game is tailor-made for a draw. I think Chelsea are the better team. I think Villa will have all, all the passion to try and get a result, uh, but I think they'll just be lacking a little bit up, up front to score against Chelsea. And for me, that's going to be a draw. You like the draw. Huh? It's great price, 28 to 10. I think win and draw at 12 to 10. And I just think there's going to be goals here, Gab. I took 33 to 10 Aston Villa to score more than one and a half goals or to score two. So that's my Christmas present. Well, hopefully anyway. Now, Brighton, who haven't won an 11, they've drawn eight of the last 11 league games against a Brentford team who started off great, lost their goalkeeper, struggling, also had a, a break. Got beat last night, but were competitive. How do you call this Yeah, one? they're very competitive last night, but this is the second one of my draws. I think this game is tailor-made for a draw. Brighton, like you said, battling to score goals. Brentford uh, will come there on a bit of, uh, on a high, actually, of, of, their, of their form. But, uh, yeah, for me, draw, this is definitely, for me, a draw. I can't see either team winning this. Yeah, I just fancy Brighton, you know, more pays back. They've got a few guys back after COVID. This is a game they've got to win, because slowly but surely they're dropping down the table. 
Would I take even money? No. I'll be watching this game. Obviously, it's a late game, but it's got a funny feeling Brighton may sneak it, but they aren't in any... Double is about 12 to 1 if you take the double two yeah, draws. Well, so it's a very big price. Uh, I'm going to have a strike at that double. 12 to 1, nothing wrong with that. And last but not least, Gav, can our boys, Man United, Cake beat Badges. Newcastle? Cake war game for us. I think we can't win this game. Everybody is... I wouldn't say beat Newcastle. They've thrashed Newcastle. Uh, they just leak goals. They just can't defend and keep a clean sheet. In saying that, I'm just going to touch wood here, United. We haven't been the greatest without Ronaldo up front scoring. He gets maybe one, two chances in a game and he saves us. Um, the whole team collectively has to play a lot better. Yeah. Um, but I think we'll be too good for Newcastle. It'll be a big crowd, a passionate crowd. United come to town. Newcastle, full the stadium. Yep. You know, the Geordies will be out. But we need, to, we need to just raise our game another 5-10%. I think we'll win 2-3-0. Yeah, let's hope so. We've got Newcastle away, then Burnley at home. So get six points there. Brings us bad in the top four. Now on to the championship. There have been three games that have been postponed as of uh, yesterday. And I had a look this morning. But we kick off with Stevie B's team, Fulham, who cost us two bets. I couldn't believe how bad they, were, they played. But in fairness to Sheffield United, they were well organised. Birmingham got destroyed at Blackburn. Fulham 4 to 10, Gav, surely they've got to get back to winning. They've goals. got to get back to winning. They want to get into the playoffs and get up top there and, and even secure a permanent place to, to go up. They've got to win games like this. Like you said, they were terrible during the week. I mean, it just, it just wouldn't fall for them in the, yeah. in the last third. But yeah, 4 to 10 looks like a good price for them, a team that's sitting toward the top of the table. Yeah. Well, I agree, even though they've drawn four and lost one of their last five Fulham. But uh, geez, this is a game... They do look the best team in the league, but they've got to pull it together because uh, the crowd underneath them are slowly closing. It's automatic you want. You don't want to play off place, but I think it should be three comfortable points. Huddersfield, Blackpool, Gab, yeah, how do you see it? This is my next best bet. I think Huddersfield at home have won four, drawn two, lost one. Yeah. Um, I think they're the form team. Blackpool come, they're drawing one, lost two of their last three. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm all over Huddersfield in this game. I think they'll win this comfortably. Yeah, the only thing about Huddersfield is the great form. They are, what's the last time they were at home against Coventry? They got totally outplayed. They scored early and they have a poor habit of conceding. Now, Blackpool have only won one and eight, and that was against Peterborough. They got up late. 12 to 10, Gav, I couldn't put you off it, but uh, something just worries me about Huddersfield, what I've seen. But 12 to 10, I wouldn't yeah, put you off uh, taking them. I tend to go for these teams at 12 to 10 because of the home form yeah. um, and home ground advantage that it plays in, in games like this. So when two teams are quite evenly matched, you, know, you tend to lean to the 13th man and the 12th yeah. man uh, yeah, coming off the bench and, and the supporters. So I'm leaning towards Huddersfield. I think Huddersfield get a positive result. Yeah, they always score early, so I might have a look at a little interest in Huddersfield to score first. Now, Hull City versus Blackburn. I watched Hull City last week against Nottingham Forest. They played well. They were never really in the game, but they poxed a goal. But second half, Nottingham Forest came back and beat them 2-1. Blackburn are their form team. They've won six and drawn one. They're beating teams for fun. I've got 15 to 10 as one of my better bets in. Do you agree? Yeah, I want this to be my value bet at 15 to 10. Um, I know they're away from home, but uh, scoring goals, 1-3, drew one of the last four uh, away games. So, I mean... You, you can't go against these teams. Um, there's good value in this in this division. So 15 to 10, when you see it, you've got to take it. Yeah. Uh, definitely a value bet at 15 to 10, Blackburn. Well, a wise man once told me, rather back a winner till he loses than a loser until he wins. So Selwyn Elk, I hope uh, that comment <laughs> carries true, on and yeah. makes us a few pounds. But uh, yeah. what I've seen, I fancy Blackburn. Now, Luton Town hosting Bristol City. I was going to go for Bristol City last week, but I ended up taking them to score over one and a half goals, and I got lucky. They got beat 3-2, but they, they got my bet landed. Luton Town, I just can't get my... They've cost me money. They were 3-0 up the one day at home, got Drew 3-all. If ever there's a game they should win, is this one, but I can't take 7-10. Yeah, you? Drew won, lost two of their last three home games, so that doesn't give you any positive... Uh feedback to go and have a good bet on them. But again, saying that uh, uh, Bristol City as well, the 18th in the, lay, in the table, drew one, lost four of their games. Yeah. You would probably think it would be somewhere around a draw, but go for the higher placed team in the league at home, 7 to 10 could be a good value bet there. Yeah, I just can't take 7 to 10. I saw both teams have scored 9 to 10, so that's my play in that particular fixture. Now the game I'm looking forward to, hopefully it's on I have my dad says Middlesbrough versus Notts Forest. I watched Middlesbrough totally outplay Bournemouth. Well, Notts Forest came back, showed a lot of fight. Now, Forest are unbeaten in the last nine. They're unbeaten in the last nine away from home. 
I took six to ten Forest win and draw. Do you agree? Yeah, I think six to ten. If you can get win and draw, you know, sixty-six percent chance of getting a positive result for yourselves. Good bet for a team that's in form, unbeaten and nine away. Yeah, it's had some phenomenal form. Um, I think early in the season they struggled a little bit, yeah. and uh, they've turned the corner now and they're slowly creeping up the table and putting some good results together. Tough game going to Middlesbrough, but you know, when you're in form, things roll for you. Yeah. Um, You'll go there and you'll miss Q and you'll land in the top corner, you know, one of those type of, of games. So five to two again, another one of those value bets uh, in this league. Uh, could be some good value, six to ten, maybe even better. Yeah, well, I actually, the first bet I had was them five to two. Then I remember watching Middlesbrough, a lot of good young players. It's going well. They've only lost one in seven. Chris Wilder, the guy that got Sheffield United promoted, he's just taken over. They're going well. So I've thrown the draw in sitting on the fence, but I really like Nottingham Forest. You just need to have a look and see how many of these players have got COVID in yeah. some of these squads as well. So you've got to break it down. If there's too many youngsters in the team, then have a strike on a, on a team like Forest to come there with more senior players. Yeah. But have a closer look at that, then have your bets. Yeah, 6 to 10 is my play. On to our second page. Millwall versus Swansea. How do you see it, Gav? Gee, two teams are struggling this year, but I thought that uh, Swansea would do a lot better than what they are. I think they're sitting 16th on the table. One, two, lost two of their last four games. Normally they're quite a good ball playing team, but I think yeah. maybe that form is all sitting at home. Because uh, on the road, they're just, they're just not putting it together for me. Where a Millwall team always seems hard to break down. Yeah. Um, I suppose the draw would probably be the obvious bet for this team. But again, uh, the pricing looks very good and appetizing at 14 to 10 for a home team. Yeah. Um, tough game to call, but probably to go with Millwall on the draw. Yeah, I agree. Millwall have only lost one of the last, they're unbeaten in the last five at home, but they've only lost one of the last ten at home. So uh, Swansea had a great run, manager came in, they won four in the spin, I thought this is it, but they've just, like most championship teams, they do have a dip. I agree with Gav, Millwall versus Swansea. Now, I'll go first with Preston Sheffield United. Sheffield United against Fulham was the best performance I'd seen in the, in the, prem, in the championship, sorry, this season. 14 to 10, oh, any other team bar Preston, which is my hometown and my main team, I would take. I wouldn't put you off because they've won their last four, new manager, won the last three away from home, and they look a proper threat to get promoted. Preston, we've only lost one of the last 11 at home. I don't see us winning. I'm hoping we can get a point. I just don't see it getting a result. How do you see it? I don't know how many of the Sheffield United players are still left when they were in the Premiership a season or two ago. And... Uh, I think this year they also had a bad start like Forest. They struggled in the beginning. And they changed the coach and they, you know when you have a positive change, um, they started to climb the ladder again and you say they're the team in form. Um, Preston, your boys, it's hard to go against your own team that you, you want to have a bet on. Um, especially when they've got some good home form at the moment yeah. and they are playing quite well. But you, know, you just know that the other team is a little bit stronger man for man. Um, again, you know, the draw would be a good bet. One team unbeaten at home for a while, one team unbeaten away from home. Um, probably Sheffield United on, on, on the statue of where they are as a bigger club, maybe that would be the bet to go for at 14 to 10. Yeah. What a tough game with, to call. Yeah. What happened with Sheffield United is once they got relegated, all their players, you know, Ramsdale, a few of the guys got sold, a couple of guys were looking at moving. Now everything's settled down, but they fired their manager, Jakanovic, the ex Fulham manager, given the guy a three year contract. So now things are settled down. The guy, Sander, Sanderberg, I think his name is, a midfield player. He was their key man. He's back. They're looking good. Wouldn't put you off taking 14 Yeah, to once 10. you get into the, the rhythm of the, of the league, I think when you're making all these changes, trying to find a formation, time goes so quickly that you find you six, seven games down the league and you're chasing the game. And you tend to put your older players in there because you want some experience. But you need to put the youth in there as well to give yeah. you the legs. And I think they've now found the balance, Sheffield United. Yeah. Um, I think they have a good price at 14 to 10. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I agree. Now, Derby County, who have lost 21 points this year due to financial irregularities, play a West Brom team who are slowly but surely, they're finding their way back. They're unbeaten in five. But I watched them against Barnsley on Friday. Not really impressed. <clears throat> Derby, nothing to lose. Monday game, 5 o'clock our time. How do you see it? Yeah, yeah I've, I think I've lost so much money on West Brom that I've, I'm kind of like giving up with them at the moment. Uh, they've got the players. They're another team that got relegated, but they've got the players to get back up and bounce straight back up. But they're just making heavy weather of this. And the Derby team is going to lose. Just yeah. go out there and play. Rooney, Rooney, I think, is doing a good job. 
you know, it's not his fault that all the all the points have been deducted. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, Derby can get a positive result here. Uh, maybe Derby in the draw. They are playing at home, so we'll give yeah. them the we'll give them the draw as well. No, it's eight to ten Derby in the draw. They've only lost one of their last two. They won two and lost one. Now the team that beat them was QPR. I think a fourth in the league, and they scored an injury time. So uh, don't be surprised if there's an upset there. But I think there'll definitely be goals. Now, the last game is my best uh, each value bet, 19 to 10 QPR. They've only lost one at home, and that was to Stoke. How they lost, I don't know. Was, they lost 2-0, but they were 1-0 down. They got a penalty. Charlie Austin missed it. They missed numerous chances, got caught late. Bournemouth, if it wasn't for Gary Kale at the back last week, they'd have lost a lot more. Sometimes when things are going bad, you've got to go against the team. I can't believe the betting, 15 to 10 Bournemouth. I'm on 19 to 10 QPR. My money's down already, Gav. Yeah, I think uh, QPR at home are a formidable team to, to play against. Bournemouth got the players, but uh, again, they've drawn two and uh, lost two of their last four away from home. Um, I'm, I'm shoving a lean towards QPR as well. I think they, they won five, drew one, lost one of their last seven. So shows you the form is there. Um, you're the home team, big day. Big weekend of football. I uh, think they've got the last game of the weekend. So, oh. yeah, QPR for me. Does yeah, the, struck. yeah, the five wins, one draw. The draw was actually against Nottingham Forest when they got a, a deflected equaliser late on. So, Loftus Road, punters will be there. I'm on the hoops. On to our soccer six. We, unfortunately, we haven't got the Boxing Day Soccer 13 from the Swedes because it hasn't come through. But I'll go through our gold circle soccer six and soccer 10. And once we pull it up, yeah, soccer six, I'm um, Bankery Wolves to beat Watford. I don't see Burnley losing at home to Everton. I'm Bankery Arsenal to beat Norwich City. I've thrown the draw in with Tottenham against Crystal Palace and ended up with two fields. I'm looking for upsets in the West Ham Southampton and Aston Villa Chelsea fixtures 2 1 6. On to our Gold Circle Soccer 10. I'm Bankery Liverpool to beat Leeds. Wolves to beat Watford. I'm going Burnley, win and draw at home against Everton. I think Man City will be too strong for at home against Leicester City. And likewise, Arsenal, I think they'll be too good at Norwich City. Our second page, I've gone Tottenham, win and draw at home against Newcastle. West Ham to avoid defeat against Southampton. I don't see Blackburn Rovers losing at Hull City and ending up with two fields. I'm going Middlesbrough, Nottingham Forest and Aston Villa, Chelsea all three selections which is 288 rand on to our budgies bets for the weekend and i'll go through this one slowly i'm going aston villa to win or draw i'm going over two and a half goals and both teams to score no in the norwich city arsenal game so that's arsenal to win three nil or more and both teams to score yes in the west ham southampton match 3,500 to 200. Our premiership over two and a half goal sides are Liverpool, Leeds United, Burnley, Everton, Man City, Leicester City, Norwich City, Arsenal, and Newcastle, Man United. 10 to 1, so 2,000 to 200 was our bet. On to the championship. I'm going Blackburn to beat Hull City, Fulham to beat Birmingham City, QPR to beat Bournemouth, and Nottingham Forest to win or draw at Middlesbrough. 3,000 to 200. Our championship both teams to score sides are Luton Bristol City, Millwall Swansea, Peterborough Reading, and Derby West Brom. 2,200 to 200. My team goals only have taken a bit of a chance here. There are only three, uh, sorry, there are four sides. I'm going Arsenal, Everton, Tottenham, and I'm chancing Aston Villa all to score over one and a half goals or a minimum of two goals. 25 to 1, 5,000 to 200 was our play. And last but not least, our soccer sixer. I'm going Liverpool to beat Leeds, Man City to beat Leicester, Arsenal to beat Norwich, Fulham to beat Birmingham, QPR to beat Bournemouth, and Sunderland to beat Doncaster Rovers, 2,400 to 200. Gav? You've never been shy to have a bet. But my bet this weekend is definitely going to be Arsenal and Spurs. I think they two sitters. I think the guys can take all their doubles and trebles. And I'm going to throw Blackburn in as a 15 to 10 bet. Yeah. And maybe add that to add some value to the bet and get it up to about 8, 9 to 1. Okay, well, that's good, Gav. I know our money will be down shortly. So to everybody, thank you very much. 
Have a Merry Christmas and please remember to stay on side.